In this video net interview, I'm speaking with Brian Lenz, Director of TV Product Development at B Sky B. Hi, Brian. Hi, how are you going? Very well. Um, you launched your 3D channel to pubs in the UK back in April with this, the aim of increasing consumer awareness mm -hmm. for 3D. I just wonder, has it had the desired effect? Uh, I think it definitely has. I mean, we, we believe that over a million people have watched, uh, at some point in time, watched a 3D match in pubs. And, you know, we actually just saw some information earlier this morning in a survey done by Strategy Analytics, which said 50% of respondents were aware that Sky was doing 3D into pubs. So we think it's certainly done the job in, in getting a, in building awareness out there. Um, there's obviously another 50% to go and, and all those sorts of things. But yeah, I think it's it's been really successful for us in a lot of ways. Um, uh, it's, it's done something to create awareness, to create an opportunity for people to go see 3D because it really is the seeing is believing experience that we want to get. And we know that when people are able to watch 3D, they become more excited about it and more interested in, in buying it. Um, so uh, it's, been, it's been successful just on that side, but it's also been successful in its own right for what it's done for our pubs and pubs business. In that it's, it's been a great offer that's helped pubs in a difficult time as well begin to differentiate themselves. And those that have been able to really take advantage of it and really market it and do those things for themselves have seen great uh, great excitement and interest in their own uh, and the own punters coming in. Okay, and I mean, you obviously you don't need uh, new set-top boxes, but do you have a kind of a registration or waiting list for people who want 3D? Oh, uh, we have. You know, we've been communicating, you know, quite uh, quite openly with our base and we've had, a, you know, had a website up. Uh, and collected registrations at a lot of things. You know, we're not we're not publishing the results. There's been great interest though. Uh, just you know, we can't give out that sort of information for uh, just uh, the securities laws and all those sorts of things. But um, it's been a great response and gives us it. Just, everything we've had along the way just keeps on validating that there's a pull out there for three D done well uh, for for our customers in their homes. Okay, and I understand that it's, it's free if you have a sort of top package for mm -hmm. the HD subscribers. Yeah. I mean, presumably that will change eventually. Uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't presume that. I mean, I think the, the important point is that it's free to our premium customers right now. So it is part of our top package. So the way that people are getting it is they upgrade to, to Sky Sports, Sky Movies, and HD. Because the channel and the proposition is movies, it is sport, it is general entertainment. And it's because of HD, there's Sky Plus HD boxes that they can get it. So really we've just simplified down the messaging to say if you get those things from us, you get 3D as part of it. Now how that works, you know, from our side, you know, from a, from a commercial side is it's a premium product, so it's driving up upgrades, it's keeping retention, keeping customers happy on that product. It's also signaling where we are. Now, there's all sorts of things that could happen down the path as maybe content expands and all that. But, you know, in terms of it being a charge on top of that premium charge, I want to presume that it's going to change. Okay, so it's really an, an upsell. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and will there be content available outside of the channel for pay-per-view straight away? Uh, there will be, yeah, there's pay-per-view titles. Um, it's going to be available to any any HD subscriber who, um, again, uh, who has a 3D TV. So they will need to enable 3D uh, to be, and they'll be able to watch preview content and then be able to watch pay-per-views if they pay for them. But they just won't, you know, if they're not on the top tier package, they won't be able to watch the, the programming and uh, that'll make up the evening schedules and weekend schedules. Okay, and do you think that eventually 3D will become a universal experience? I mean, we're assuming that uh, HD will eventually become the new SD. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that 3D will become the new HD one day? Uh, I don't, but I would, I'd like to kind of separate two things. I think HD was a quality upgrade over SD. So it really was taking all of 2D and saying, here's how it will be done at a higher quality level. 3D is a different proposition, a different experience. And I think while, certainly while there's, uh, while the glasses solutions are around, it's going to mean that it is around more around an appointment to view proposition, and it's going to be more around what's the content I really just want to sit down and watch, and what's the things that I'm excited to engage with fully, because it doesn't really match well with uh, the idea of watching, uh, watching the TV and maybe looking at my iPad or, you know, while I'm cooking and all those things. 
our goal isn't to produce the whole schedule in 3D. Our goal is to produce the best of our content that people really want to sit down and watch and are happy to, you know, engage with, that they want to see more, you know, in a more immersive, more exciting way. That's what I think the type of content will be. So I think there'll be a growth of content, but I don't think it's about replacing and replicating SD or, or HD. It's more about what's the right content that's appointment to view and sit down. So even after it's been in the field a couple of years, we don't necessarily need a 24-hour schedule on a, a 3D channel. I think it can be... Uh, well, I, I, you know, so this is the difference. Is, uh, I mean, what it, what it doesn't mean is that you need all of your channels 24 hours a day in 3D. But I think, I think what you will see is genre-based channels developing in 3D that can have full schedules. But it, what it's not about is saying that you know, all 500 channels on, on the Sky platform need to go 3D and that you're simulcasting all of your content all of the time in 3D. I think there'll be, there'll be growth and there'll absolutely be multiple 3D channels, but I, I don't think that what you're going to see is as rapid of, a, of just a, a step change move from SD to HD. So the whole schedule, the whole schedule lineup moves to three D. And what needs to happen in the home? I mean, we know you don't need a new set top box, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, how is the three D signal recognised right now by TVs? I mean, will it be an auto switch if somebody tunes to the new three D channel? So within uh, HDMI one point four, uh, there's been published uh, you know standards for sending control signals for both telling the TV that this is an HDMI uh, HDMI one point four three D signal and saying the format that that signal is in. Now all of our boxes are HDMI 1.3 boxes, but what, is, what, you, what we will be rolling out uh, uh, you know, over the next six months or so on, the, on a stage basis is the ability to use those control messages from HDMI 1.4 over HDMI 1.3 so that TVs will be able to automatically switch into through, in and out of 3D mode. What we've also done in our set-top box, in the Sky Plus HD box, is fix rendering so that while you're watching the HD, the, the 3D channel, the EPG and now and next you know, guide, uh, guide will render in side-by-side. -side. Uh, so while in 3D, you're able to also view and watch the, uh, the EPG. So you know, those things are going to roll out over, over the next uh, you know, several months. But from launch, the EPG fix will be in and we'll be beginning to roll out the control signal side. And will there be any subtitles from launch for 3D channel? There's not going to be any automated closed captioning, so, so we're not automating subtitles. I think that that's one of the things that you know, is being worked on across several of the different standards bodies. And we need to get to sort of a standard approach on that that will allow us to signal it. Yeah. More around signaling it probably dynamically so that you can figure out a place to put it. But uh, it doesn't preclude that movies and that, that require subtitles. You know, well, you know, for example, you know, Avatar uses them in some places or, you know, if, if, if that's the case, then they can sit there and uh, uh, they can absolutely be burned into the images and, will be, and, and can be easily viewed with comfort. Okay, and the uh, the channel launches for the home in October. Yeah, so the channel's been up and running as a preview channel on our platform, channel two one seven Sky three D, uh, since April third. Um, from one October though, with the Ryder Cup, we'll start broadcasting live content and in the program of film and general entertainment uh, uh, from October first. And I believe you've won an IBC Innovation Award for the three D TV. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations on that. Thank you very much. I mean, do you think that um, 3D is an innovation that has to be driven by pay TV? I th listen, I think it fits absolutely. I think, I think generally any premium, high quality innovations in TV fit best and need to be driven by the pay TV model because in general, a premium experience is very difficult to monetize in a free-to-air advertising model because eyeballs are eyeballs. You know, eyeballs seen in HD don't pay eyeball, pay more than eyeballs seeing in SD. And so when you're relying on advertising, it's very difficult to find the model that is going to create enough revenue to justify that investment. You need to wait till it does get mass, mass market for you to be able to even make any money to justify it. In a pay model, what we're selling is premium experiences. You know, that's what people pay for. They pay for premium experiences, premium content, put together in a compelling, innovative way. 
So 3D fits exactly in with what we do because it's a premium cost to us to develop and present and customers understand that for those things that is the case, they will pay a, pay a premium price for. So that's what the pay TV model really fundamentally does and creates. It's just a drive and, and a way to make innovation work. And really, you know, the recognition that we're getting here is, you know, I think, uh, you know, a nice little feather in our cap, but it's really because of what, what we do and what we care about most, which is bringing great entertainment experiences to our customers. Okay, well that's a great place to finish up. So uh, Brian, thanks for your time. No problem, thank you very much.